In economics, we are basically studying patterns. What goes up must come down in the long run, just like a wave. Our economic policy should not aim to stop that pat pattern, but rather to make the wave less extreme. When the wind blows across the ocean, waves start to form in the water with a predictable repetition of higher and lower heights. Still, it is difficult to predict the size of a wave, and whether it is safe to ride, because all waves are different, less wind will make flatter and calmer waves, while faster winds and thunderstorms will make taller and more turbulent waves. Even through the ocean, waves are affected by rain, varying wind speeds and natural tides. The cycle is still continuous. The business cycle is much like the ocean, where even a continuous pattern can suddenly change in magnitude. Real GDP changes over time between expansion and contraction. Right now, the economy is heading to the peak of our wave. Real GDP has been going up at an increasingly faster rate since 2008 recession, and unemployment has gone down rapidly. It is fun to ride this ra wave right now, but if we let it get too high, the economy will come crashing down. Increasing our GDP means increasing inflation, meaning that goods become more expensive, which is dangerous for the economy. The target inflation rate is 1-2%, to 2 but in the past year, inflation has been rising steadily and past that mark. Looking back even further, the time before, right before a recession has always been characterized by increasing inflation and below normal unemployment rates. If inflation happens at a faster rate, it indicates that the economy is also growing faster. Economies often have target inflation rates to be met in order to keep the business cycle stable and to prevent drastic drops from peaks to troughs. We aim for an inflationary increase between 1 and 2 percent, but in our current expansionary phase, the inflation rate is higher at 2.4 percent to be exact. To prevent our fall into the contractionary phase from being so extreme, it is important to control inflation and keep it within the acceptable range. Real GDP influences inflation in many ways, one of which is the amount of money that the government spends. Real GDP's contribution to increasing price levels and inflation is based on the relationship between aggregate supply and aggregate demand. When these levels are the same, this is an indicator that the economy is operating at its full potential. Thus, the equilibrium real GDP and price levels indicate full potential. But when aggregate demand increases, which is what happens when the government spends more money, it leads to a demand pull inflation that shifts both equilibrium real GDP and price level to a higher quantity than before, resulting in even more inflation. With increased government spending, price levels in the United States will keep rising, which often leads to a recession. Currently, President Trump plans to increase government spending on infrastructure and military which could bring the United States economy into an inflationary gap that cannot be sustained. Eventually, that will lead to just as strong of a recession, which will result in high unemployment. When we are about to reach a high or low point in the economy, we need policy to help prevent drastic changes. This is much like a surfer who knows that their ideal surf zone happens near the peak of the wave just before it breaks, and this is where they should start to surf. The Fed should respond to the rising inflation by enacting contractionary monetary policy. To do this, they should raise the interest rates slightly. Higher interest rates will decrease gross private investment and domestic consumption. This leads to lower aggregate demand and lower inflation. The same effect could be accomplished by selling bonds on the open market if changing interest rates aren't affected. Monetary policy is a better choice for solving inflation because fiscal policy is implemented by the federal government. This means that policy decisions take a long time to go through, by which time the economy might be in even more trouble. It also means that decisions are more affected by political goals than what makes the most sense for the economy in the long run.
Don't get fooled into thinking that this monetary policy action will destroy the economy since it will slightly decrease real GDP. In fact, it will actually keep the economy strong in the long term. Remember that the smartest surfers won't ride the highest waves. Instead, they ride the smaller waves so that they can safely come back down and ride another wave instead of wiping out. Our policy action is just like that. We want to allow the economy to safely ride the waves of the business cycle by lowering the, sleep, the steepness of the fall. While this might prevent the economy from reaching its full potential, it is worth it to save the economy from falling just as far into a recession.